Final Draft version 13 has just, I was going to say it's just come out. It feels like it actually just kind of slipped out without much notice. None of the usual fanfare, anyway. In fact, actually, it was over a week, I think, before I, as an existing user, even got emailed to say, Oi, there's a new one. Why don't you buy it? So, version 13 of a writing app. Okay, it's a writing app that's a bit specialised. It's for writing scripts and screenplays, if you don't happen to already know. But in its field, Final Draft is a major writing app, and this is its first big release since version 12 in April 2021. If you've not used Final Draft at all, uh, please stick around with me for a minute, because I do want to make sure you see why... I mean, for all the criticism, it's very good overall... But here's the thing. If you have an older version of Final Draft, and I think actually any older version, but especially, say, 11 or 12, then I can think of a reason to upgrade to the new version 13, but I'm afraid I don't think it's worth it. I mean, I wish it were, but there's just not much to this new release. Hello. I'm William Gallagher, and this is 58 Keys, which is ever, as always, is for writers like you and me who use and who write on Macs and iPhones and iPads. I do subscribe or support 58 Keys on Patreon because usually there is so much to talk about. This time, the problem is that Final Draft 13 it doesn't add a lot for you and I to discuss. I mean, you might like it, but there's just not much there. But then the thing is, I don't really see how Final Draft can add much. Final Draft is excellent for writing screenplays and television scripts. Uh, It also covers theatre and radio, but I'm not actually convinced it does those very well. But film and TV, yes. And actually, the ways in which it is excellent, they are excellent. But they've been there right from, well, at least from when I started using Final Draft in, I think, version 6. And I presume they have to have been there since version 1. So maybe this is just a failure of imagination on my part, but it seems to me that the really good core features are locked in. And all the Final Draft company can do now is add some nice frilly bits around the edges. Uh, you think to help organise your work, maybe plan your writing, perhaps. And yep, that is mostly what Final Draft 13 does. It is building on some nice bits around the edges that came in uh, with versions 11 and particularly 12. And and they're fine, they're good, but they're not, you know, urgently compelling. Let me show you what's new. And then if you're still up for it, um, I would like to take a bit to enthuse. After all the buzz, let's enthuse about Final Draft's excellent features in general. Won't take long. Won't take long because they're quick to describe, but they're so, so good. Uh, actually, let's get this out of the way uh, first. Uh, officially, Final Draft 13 costs $250 new, but at the moment it's being discounted to $200, and it's always being discounted somewhere to $200. If you're upgrading from a previous version, the uh, the cost is $100. So now, with Final Draft 13, you can enter emoji into your script. I'm truly astounded that you couldn't before. This doesn't feel like some big new Final Draft feature. It's more Final Draft finally doing a bit better job of working with what the Mac can do anyway. Yeah, nonetheless, if you want to spend $200 buying Final Draft in order to then write like a child, well, knock yourself out. Yeah, someone once sent, I don't know why this puts this in my head, but someone once sent me a script that had a character saying F asterisk asterisk asterisk. And it wasn't a joke. The writer was too timid to write out the word that he or she wanted their character to say. If it's what the character would say, you write the word. Or now, presumably, look up its equivalent emoji. This, this is more interesting to me a little bit. Typewriter mode. Whatever I am writing in, so yes, final draft, but also pages, drafts, word, anything. You know, you start, you work your way at the top of the screen, but very soon you're writing at the bottom. Everything is down there, your neck is cooked over it. Final draft's new typewriter mode keeps up, you're writing at about your eye level, so it's moving the page up underneath you instead. So that's got to be more ergonomic, I think. It's good. It doesn't remind me, that. It reminds me of um, IA Writer, which has a, a, a focus mode where it will highlight whatever sentence you're writing now and just kind of dim everything before or after. And actually, it also reminds me, I think there's actually quite a startling number of these now, but there are at least a few app, writing apps that will actually permanently delete your writing if you don't type fast enough or if you pause to think for too long. I mean, thinking and writing, you can't be... Phew, 
Don't want me mixing those, do you? Next in Final Draft 13, Midnight Mode. Previously on Macs and I imagine PCs, well, I was going to say, well, there was nothing. Everything just looked, the screens looked the way they looked. Okay, But then along came this idea of dark mode. And now everything that screens used to look like had to be retrospectively renamed light mode. And OK, so things that were white or black and all this stuff. Yeah, there's actually surprisingly more to it than you'd think. But at its heart, dark mode means having your Mac write uh, white text on a black background instead of the other way around, less glare in your face and things like this. Final Draft says it's midnight mode goes further. OK. If black or white text is a thing, so is multicoloured text now. In Final Draft 13, you can customise the colours in your script, which must be highly useful, except I've never used a single colour other than black. I OK. It's not that Final Draft expects you to have certain characters whose dialogue is blue, uh, the colour, not the not adult discretion required or something. But actually, as it turns out, you can do exactly that. This character's text is blue. Final Draft says that this helps with table reads when, you know, each actor can see their dialogue by its colour instead of having to do that tedious thing of actually reading the page. Really, this thing of the colours for the character, I mean, it comes from further back in the writing process as Final Draft sees it. Uh, further back than writing the dialogue, back into the planning stage. The colours come from Final Draft's newish ways of planning out a story, of letting you assign colours to the first act of your script, the second, or to this section, or to that scene, things like this. I mean, you're writing a screenplay here, so naturally you're a visual thinker. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to knock any of this just because it doesn't happen to do anything for me, it might be for you, um, might be useful for you. What I thought would be a thing, and still might be if I apply itself to it properly, is Final Draft's other planning tools, not the colours, but the rest of it, the outline editor and the beat board, as they call it. Uh, I think these, I'm pretty sure these came in version 11, but they were made much better in version 12, and now they've been refined further. So you can still slap down a stray thought and then later move it around, link it to other thoughts and ultimately build up an outline. But you also get some new custom views on this outline and what Final Draft calls custom lanes. So, should you choose to, you can plan out your script in blocks, scenes, or whatever you like, and then drag those blocks up to this lane in the outline editor. The outline editor, it's like a, it's a horizontal representation of your script's pages. So you can drag a scene idea up there and say that it's going to take an eighth of a page or two pages or, I don't know, 60 pages. I read a script once that had no scene headings at all and it was so good you didn't notice it. Uh, the Last Ship pilot episode. A final draft, anyway, it suggests that this first available lane, do what you like with it, but they suggest it's used for acts. So I want act one to be 10 pages long, I decide. And then in this lane two, you can drag scenes, you can fiddle about as you make them fit and put off writing, basically. What is new in 13 is that you can now have more of these lanes and so spend even longer doing anything except writing. If this works for you in version 12, it is better in version 13. And actually, not much, but I have had it help me when I had a lot of scene ideas on a particular project. And trying out this outline editor then in version 12, it did help me straighten things out in my head. So that's got to be good. One of the things I really liked about Final Draft uh, back when I started using it, pretty sure it was version 6, might be 5, pretty sure it was 6, was the Scene Navigator. This pop-up panel that lists all of your scenes and... Back then, I promise you this was true, you could drag scene 10 up the list and Final Draft would move the relevant pages in your script. I mean, actually, that's very much like the way Scrivener works now, but it isn't. It's no longer how Final Draft works, and I don't know why. In fact, actually, Final Draft hasn't done it in so long. I'm starting to think I dreamt this. Maybe they'll put it in 14. I don't know. What this navigator can do now, and specifically what's new in version 13, it, it's back to these colour things. Again, you can set scenes to be certain colours, set them in here. Honestly, I don't know why. I mean, you know about amended pages being different colours so you can see on the... Yeah, but whatever gets you to the finishing line, that's a good thing. And if it does it, then it's excellent. And I suppose that's the same sort of thing that I think of about the last new thing in Final Draft 13, which is a new writing stats feature 
in Final Draft 13, you can set goals for yourself like, I want to write four pages today. Over time, you'll be able to track how you did against these goals. Like you're going to forget you haven't finished the script. Yeah, look, the thing is to me, if you're commissioned, right, well, then your writing goal is set for you. You have a deadline. These are the pages. That's the deadline. Off you pop. If you're not commissioned, if this is a spec script, well, it seems to me that you're fitting it around all your other writing. And I just, this again, just me, I think you'd be better off doing the writing instead of setting possibly arbitrary goals. But you know, on the other hand, you know, we're writers. We have backsides that need kicking. So yet again, if this helps you, it helps you. Well, tone of voice went up a bit then, but overall it's been kind of sinking, hasn't it? I wonder what colour my dialogue is. All of this, that's, this is what's new on Final Draft 13. And really, if all I've done is show you that there, there happens to be nothing in it for me, maybe for you, let me remind you, the cost is $100 to upgrade from previous version or $200 to buy new. To buy new. And let me just say finaldraft.com, have a look at that. Before you do, though, I said I would like to take just a minute to say what's good about Final Draft overall, the reason I write scripts in it, the reason why I think it's worth reviewing even when there's nothing going on. And, it, well, it comes down to this. When I have typed characters' names once, and when I have typed scene locations once, Final Draft remembers them and at least auto-completes them a bit, or offers to. Now, that by itself doesn't sound like a big thing actually does sound familiar now it was new when it started but it's everything does it now it means when i'm writing a row between two characters i can bash away at their dialogue with as much heat and speed and verve i hope as the characters have and i'm not stopping to hit return send to the dialogue remember the name hit yeah, yeah, that's it that's it actually i obviously thought that alone was worth whatever version six cost and over the years, I think it's been worth it that I've upgraded to version 8, version 11, and most recently version 12. As yet, I have not upgraded to version 13. I can't see a reason to. I mean, I still might. If I were working with a studio and they'd upgraded to version 13, well, then I would just do it, just to make sure we're all on the same version, just get rid of any potential problems. And if I were on, say, version 9, maybe, then I would think about 13, because over that time the app has become steadily less of a clunky Windows clone and a lot more like a proper Mac app. But otherwise, there isn't enough in version 13 to make it an obvious upgrade, I'm afraid to say. I'm not used to 58 keys being negative. I mean, about a little bit, sure, this thing doesn't do that, whatever, but overall, not recommending something? I don't know. There's so much good in writing tools for us, so much else to talk about, that if something's rubbish, well, just don't bother with it. What's the point of it? But Final Draft is big, and Final Draft 13 is empty, really. That's it for this sad episode of 50. We need a sad tune to play out on. Uh, yeah, OK. Stop there, William. That's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Now, take care of yourself, eh? It's important. Write more in Final Draft or anything, scripts or anything. The act of writing is good for us. Do more of it. We need to. We need to. And I'll see you soon.